When using a hammock, there is something that you should always do before you set it up that is very important and sometimes overlooked. In this episode, we're gonna look at that something and more. Now in most cases, if one is gonna set up or hang their hammock, it's gonna be between two trees. Therefore, the very first thing or step that you should do after you found this great spot or location is to look up. Now I'm not talking about cloud cover, if you should set up your hammock first or the tarp, or not even setting up that tarp, taking a chance it's not gonna rain so you have great ventilation and a great view, especially during the nighttime as you're gazing at the stars as you fall asleep. Now those are really great things to think about, but the looking up we're talking about today will help prevent bodily harm or fatal accidents, and that is dead trees and widow makers. First, let's look at dead trees. There's two types of dead trees I like to focus on, and the first one is making sure you do not attach your hammock suspension to one. Now that may sound silly, but just hear me out. When you come to an area and you're looking to find a place to hang your hammock on, you're looking horizontal. You're looking at the tree trunk and it may look good and healthy and you'll hang your hammock on there because it looks just like the other trees, not realizing you just hung your hammock on a dead tree. Now this happened to me a few years ago while hiking Isle Royale with my friend Runner. We came to the spot right next to Lake Superior with a babbling brook right next to it. And being my first turn to pick the spot, I picked the spot right down by the lake with a fantastic view. You can hear the waves overlapping the rocks and also a tasty breeze to keep the biting insects at bay. After setting everything up, I had Runner come over to look at my piece of heaven and having my nose up in the air, I looked up and realized I hung on a dead tree. So you see, or I should have seen, the mistake that I made is I looked at the bark and it looked healthy and fine and the tree being large in diameter and it was very tall, it towered over the other trees and there was no branches below the foliage of the other trees. It's when I looked up through the foliage I can see on top there was dead branches. In late fall, winter and early spring when there are no leaves, then look at the end of the branches at the tips to see if there's any buds and also if some of the bark has fallen off. The second type of dead tree you should be looking for are the ones that are around in close proximity to where you're going to be hanging your hammock. A lot of people fail to do this. Now in most cases you can tell which direction they're going to fall by the way they are leaning or if they have heavy branches on one side. But remember when there's heavy winds it will rock that tree back and forth and it can fall in any direction. And another thing to consider if you have a dead tree next to you, I like to have healthy large trees between the dead tree and my hammock. So if it does fall, it deflect it to one side or the other. But if you're not sure, hang in a safer area. Over the last couple of years, we had two incidents that led to fatalities in the Boundary Waters canoe area where a tree fell right on the tent. So you need to take every precaution to keep yourself safe when you're out in the wilderness because you never know when a bad storm or heavy winds are gonna move in. Now for the widow maker, and because there's a lot of women hiking out there and experiencing the great outdoors, which I'm happy to see, we could also call it a widower maker. But a widow maker is a dead branch caught precariously high in a tree which could fall on a person below. Now you may look up and see a small branch dangling above you thinking, that's okay. But hear this, I've taken little sticks. Put a point on them. Drive them into the ground and use them as stakes. Now, a lot of those branches, when they're broken, they will have an edge on them, so you have to be careful. A case in point, my brother and his wife were camping at a state park in Minnesota, and they had a camper that sits on the back of the truck. 
while they're sitting around the fire enjoying the day, not realizing there was a widow maker above their camper, it broke loose and fell on the top of the camper, penetrating through the roof and leaving a big hole. Luckily, no one was hurt. If a branch that size could easily pierce through the roof of a camper, just think what it could do to your hammock or a tent. So please always look for those widow makers. Now I've been trying to think of some of the reasons why people don't look up for widow makers or around for dead trees. For me, I came to that spot and I was just so excited, I just didn't look up. Otherwise, there's times where you could be exhausted from a long day's hike and you just forget. You just want to set up the camp and you just forget to look up. I think for me, over the years tent camping, I've been looking horizontal, looking for those tent pads. And when I come to that area, then I'd look down to see if the train was level or if there was any rocks or roots. And if that was the only place to put the tent, I guess I wouldn't even look up or around. I would just take that chance. That is another reason why I prefer a hammock over the tent. If I go in the woods and there's danger around me, I'll just move to a different area. Now, do you look up every time when you set up your hammock? If not, or there have been times that you forgot to, what do you think the reasons were? Please share them down below. I'd love to hear from you. So I want to leave you guys with this. Please always look up, not only to the heavens, but for those nasty widow makers. This is the Marine. Thank you for watching, and God bless.